Choosing the right profile before we start with the editing is important. Let me demonstrate that while turning this profile into this final image. First, I'll explain what these profiles are, where we can find them, and why these are different than presets. Then, as always, I'll show you the editing process for this long exposure. So, make sure to check the chapters below to quickly navigate through the video, and if you want to follow along, you can download the raw file from the link in the description. When we take a picture with our digital camera, the image sensor converts light into electrical signals. These signals must be processed in order for us to see an actual image. And this is the job of these profiles. Your camera already comes with different profiles to choose from, but software like Lightroom also does offer different profiles. So you might be wondering why do we have such a big choice when it comes to something rather simple like processing our camera's data. Depending on which profile we're using, the image will look different. Some profiles have a bit more contrast, others are more saturated, or you could go for a flat image with less contrast. Since I'm shooting my images in RAW, I prefer to have a lot of control over my images. That means I usually want to choose a flat, less contrasty profile to start the editing with. Then I can decide for myself how much contrast I want to introduce. You can think of it like this. Each profile applies a different tone curve to your image. The ones with more contrast have some kind of stronger S-curve to them, while something like Adobe Standard comes with a flatter tone curve. There's also something called a linear profile, which has no curve adjustment applied at all. Thus, it's linear and will deliver the most neutral image processing. But for this video, let's keep it simple. Now let me show you the editing in Lightroom. These profiles can be found in the basic panel under this drop-down menu. Here you will see some of the Adobe profiles, but when clicking on Browse, a new panel will open up with a lot more profiles to choose from, including the ones available in your camera. In this profile browser, we will also find the Adobe Neutral profile, which is the one I'm going to use for this RAW file, as it offers a nice flat base to begin with. As opposed to the default Adobe Color profile, this one will nicely tone down the highlights and brighten up the darkest parts of the image due to its flat curve. And this in turn makes it easier for me to fix the general tones of this long exposure. So if these profiles are all applying a certain look to our pictures, what's the difference between them and presets? When we use a preset, it will actively change sliders in Lightroom. May it be exposure, white balance, saturation, whatever. Profiles, on the other hand, just change how our raw file is interpreted without changing any of these sliders. This means we get to choose the best base before starting to edit anything. And now that we have set up the profile, let's go through the general editing process. So I want this shot to be much more dramatic with much more colors. I'm going to start this by bringing down the highlights all the way. You can see how this will nicely reveal all the details and the motion of the clouds in the sky. That's exactly what I want. But looking at histogram, you can see there's a little bit of clipping going on in the shadows. So I'm gonna bring up the shadows and I'm going to raise the blacks as well. And this will help restore more details in the darkest areas. Of course, since we're already using a very flat profile, doing this will lessen the contrast even further. So at some point we need to bring it back. And I'm going to start this by simply raising the contrast slider. What I can do as well is to raise the dehaze just a little bit. And I'm also going to raise the clarity for some more mid-tones contrast. I want this image to look sharp, so I'm going to raise the texture as well. And another thing the Adobe Neutral Profile does is it will not boost the saturation. So we have to do that ourselves as well. But that's really simple. I'm going to bring up the vibrance more than I would do usually. And I'm also going to introduce some more saturation. So this is looking pretty good. Now that we have worked on the 
base exposure of the image, we have a better idea of what this will look like. And at this point, I can start thinking about the white balance. I want the base to be a little colder. So I'm going to tone down the temperature. And in the shadows, we can see a very subtle green color cast, which I want to try to fix by slightly raising the tint like this. And that's our image of the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You will see exposure wise, it's looking much, much better with details in the highlights in the sky and in the shadows of the foreground. So that's perfect. For the next step, we want to target a few areas locally. And we're going to do that with masking. So let's open up the masking panel. I'm going to start working on the sky first. So let me use a linear gradient. With this, I'm just targeting the very top of the sky, which I want to make slightly darker. So I'm going to bring down the exposure and this will help quite a bit already, but I'm also going to bring up the contrast, which will help to bring out the structure of these long exposure clouds. And I'm also going to boost the clarity for the same effect. Just getting some more details in here. What we can do as well to give this area more punch is to apply a very subtle S curve. So let me create a point for the shadows and pull it slightly further down. And I'm creating a point for the highlights and pull it slightly further up. Now instantly the sky looks much better, but I also want to work on the foreground. So let me use a linear gradient and I'm covering pretty much everything up until that forest in the distance with a harsh edge like this. I want to brighten up the foreground. So I'm going to increase the whites very gently. Again, this will help with the overall contrast. And I'm going to bring down the shadows just a little bit to get out even more contrast in the foreground. Wonderful. Then let me create a linear gradient for this boardwalk right here in the very near foreground. Again, I'm creating a very harsh edge along this jetty right here. That's because I want to introduce more contrast to only this part. So let's raise the contrast. And I'm also going to make it look sharper by increasing the texture and the clarity. All right, that really makes this thing pop. I do think I'm going to use a radial gradient for the center part of the image like this. Bring it a little further down and further bring up the whites. And as I bring up the whites, we can improve the contrast between the kind of dark jetty in the foreground against the bright eyes on the water. Then I do think I still need to work on the sky. Let me create a sky selection. And then I'm going to intersect the selection. So let's click on those three dots, choose intersect mask width and choose radial gradient. What I'm going to do now is to create a radial gradient just above the horizon because I want to introduce some more brightness to the sky. And I'm going to do this by increasing the exposure, always paying close attention to the histogram to not overdo it. And I also want to bring up the whites. So this way we can nicely stretch the histogram, introducing further contrast to this scene. All right, and then one more thing I want to do is to make the trees in the distance darker. Therefore, I'm starting with a linear gradient coming down from the top like this. And since we don't want to change the sky, I'm going to subtract a sky mask. Perfect. Now, what we need to do is to bring down the blacks. And let's bring up the contrast. And since changing the contrast like this also affects the colors, you can now see a little bit of a blue color cast. I want to fix that by bringing down the saturation, dialing the colors back a bit. All right, and that's it for the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before with our flat base image to after. Looking much better. As always, masking is a vital part of the editing process. Now that we're done with that, let's do some color grading. And I'm gonna start in the color mixer. I do want to work on the hue for a moment. That means I'm going to bring up the orange hue, making the orange tones just a little more yellowish this way. Then let's head over into the saturation tab. I want to bring up most of these colors. So let's start with red. I'm heavily raising the orange tones as well as the yellow tones. I do want to bring down the green saturation since there are a lot of green tones in the water, which I don't think looks good. So doing that will remove them. And I want to bring up the blue saturation a notch as well, getting a more colorful sky this way. All right, looking good, but it's 
still a little bit on the colder side. Of course, we can change that with a bit of split toning. We want the highlights of this sunset to be warmer, so we are going to use the highlights in the split toning panel to do this. I'm going to introduce a warm color tone by setting up the hue. Let's go with the color right around here in the orange color range, and let's bring up the saturation. I'm going to bring it up all the way to introduce a very heavy stylized look like this. I think it looks wonderful. Now to keep a little bit of color contrast, I'm going to use the shadows of the split toning. Then we are going to apply a cold color tone to them right around here. And let's bring up the saturation notch until we can see some subtle blue tones in those shadows. This is looking wonderful. Let me deactivate the split toning just so you can see the huge difference this makes. This was before and this was with split toning. Beautiful. Now we can also head down into the calibration tab and just play around with these sliders. That's how I usually work my way through the calibration panel. I'm starting by dropping the blue primary hue, which will have a nice effect on the warmer tones, but of course also on the blue tones. And let's raise the saturation. I'm also going to raise the green primary hue and let's raise the saturation as well. And maybe let's even play around with the red primary hue. I'm going to bring it down a notch and I'm going to raise the saturation one more time. All right, this is looking awesome. Now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's go in here, bring down the radius, increase the details. We're going to add some masking while holding down the alt key so we can nicely mask out certain areas like the sky or the eyes or on the water surface like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And here we have the finished image after the raw adjustments. Now to finish things off, let me also apply some Nick Collection plugins. Last time I did this in Photoshop, this time let me show it how it's done in Lightroom. I'm going to right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Color Effects Pro 4. Let's hit edit. The Nick Collection is a paid plugin, but it's really, really useful and I'm using it all the time. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use the Brilliance Warmth effect and I'm going to bring up the warmth, which will introduce just some more warmer tones and this immediately helps with getting a better sunset look. I'm also going to bring up the saturation just a little more and then let me add another filter, filter right away. Then I'm going with the polarization effect, which always works great on images like this. Let me pull up the strength and let's play around with the rotate slider until we get something that looks nice. I think right here is a good spot. Maybe tone down the strength a bit, but that's beautiful. With this out of the way, let's it save and we are done editing this image. So I hope this tutorial was helpful explaining what profiles are and how to use them properly. If you have any questions about them, of course, feel free to ask in the comments and let me know what you think of this image. So thank you all for watching and see you all next time.